Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be going full meme because we're going with a Nilfgaardian soldiers deck that um, kind of started out with an idea from Bricky, one of my uh, team elder blood teammates, who uh, came up with the idea to combine a soldier deck with uh, Kay here and then with Yennefer of Vangerberg, where she boosts all of the units on the field and then Kay here just takes those boosts as well, which is a very full fun combo, which I worked upon a little bit further to make it even more meme -y. And uh, well, today we're going to be taking a look at that deck list, the meme army deck. So the meme army deck is mainly a soldier's deck uh, for Nilfgaard that also has a little bit of removal and of course the uh, meme card uh, of, of all things, uh, Geralt Erden just ruling all those meme cards all the time. And especially in this meta, Geralt Erden is pretty powerful, but we can always use Geralt Erden with this deck because the fact that we always will be boosting all of the units on the field, including our opponents, so we can take all of those boosts back again. So that's the least that we can do. And then of course, K here on the field will also take any boosts that our opponent will be getting. So that's gonna be a very chunky K here. Um, this is a meme deck, so I'm very well aware that there's a lot of uh, caveats to this deck as well, because if K here gets destroyed, that's a very chunky boy that just gets uh, blown up in one turn. But aside from that, this deck actually fits really well together. There's a few uh, very nice combos that we can uh, actually perform with this and I'll go through each and every single card one by one. If you're not interested in that you can also check out the deck list in the description down below. There's a link to the Play Gwent app website where you can upvote it as usual because all the support is really appreciated and uh, if you're not interested in the detailed explanation for every single card you can also use the timeline down below to skip straight to the example matches which hopefully will be very interesting. But with that being said, let's start going through all the cards. So first up, we have the Illusionist. The Illusionist is both a mage and a soldier, so fits our archetype pretty well. Four power, four, four provisions, and on deploy, you spawn a base copy of a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard on the right side of this card and set its power to one. If this card is bonded, so if there's already an Illusionist on the field, you don't set the card that you copy's power to one. So you just keep the card as is, which can be quite significant with some of the uh, higher powered base power cards of our opponent. Then we have a double Nausicaa Sergeant, just a pretty uh, simple engine card for four provisions and four power, where whenever you play a unit with deploy, you boost self by one, so easy as that. Our leader ability is also Imperial Formation, which might be important to say now, meaning that we have a passive ability where every time we play a soldier next to another soldier, he will gain armor um, based on the amount of adjacent soldiers, so one or two depending on how many soldiers you have. Now we have one ointment as a tactic card where you boost a unit by five, but if it is a soldier you heal it first, so could potentially be a lot of points depending on which card that you use it on, but generally just a good card to get some points out. And then a double Artfane Crossbowman of course, four power for five provisions with two armor and on the point you damage an enemy unit by two, and as long as this card has armor and you play a soldier, you damage a random enemy unit by one as well whenever that happens. So a pretty cool random damage engine that is just uh, a good way to take down your opponent's board slowly but surely. And we have a single standard bearer. The standard bearer comes into its own after we've used Yennefer. So with Yennefer we can actually guarantee that most of our opponent's units will be boosted. So the standard bearer benefits from this immensely. So four power for five provisions and on deploy you boost self by one for each boosted enemy unit. Which could be a full board. Uh, most of course, most likely, of course, will not be. But even if it's just like eight units, this card is still 12 points on the board. Then we have a double Alba Pikeman, basically similar to the Crossbowman in that it is a damage engine, so four power for five provisions. And on the melee row, uh, you uh, damage a random enemy unit on your opponent's melee row at the end of every one of your turns. If it is bonded, you also damage a random enemy unit by one instead. Well, not also. You just you damage a random enemy unit in dependent of it being on the melee row or not by one instead. The Alba Pikeman will always need to be on the melee row, but your target does not need to be. 
Then we have a double Alba Armored Cavalry, giving you a lock option when you deploy this uh, dude on the melee row. So five power, one armor for five provisions and a lock, which can come in really handy sometimes just to take out some of the more annoying abilities from your opponent. Now we have a double Nilf Guardian Knight as well. This actually functions doubly. So first and foremost, it's an eight power for five card. And on deploy, you boost an enemy unit by two. So basically giving you only six points. But remember, if you have K here on the board, you will get those two points back. And if you have any other cards later on, you uh, basically negate that boost whatsoever. So uh, those boosts will not be that problematic for you. And if it's the first card that you play and you start, you also don't need to boost anything. So this is just a straight up eight for five. Now we have Vanamar. Vanamar works incredibly well with the, um, the lock card that we just discussed. Vanamar is a main street power for six provisions, but on deploy, uh, if you put him on the range row, you destroy a locked enemy unit. This card, of course, can be bricked if you don't have any locks or your locks have been purified. Then this card does not do something, so be careful with it. I usually keep him for the first round to see if I can use him, because uh, we have a few other cards that we can definitely use to take out larger targets. Then Afan Hillergrand is a very cool card that we can use with uh, conjunction in conjunction with our leader ability. So uh, our leader ability also allows us to boost a allied soldier by two for three times. So we can have three charges for that ability. And when we do that for the last time, we can select a card in our deck and put it on top. When you do this with Afan Hillergrand, he moves um, to your melee row immediately. So he's summoned from the deck to your melee row. So an easy five extra points for your leader ability, giving you a total of 11 on top of, of course, all the armor that you're getting passively as well. Um, we can of course use our leader ability uh, to put any card up top and I'll just talk about why we would do that in a minute. Then of course we need a, um, it's really funny, we actually have all three cards of the triptych um, for Nilf cards, so the three soldiers that basically can function right or next to each other because I think this is the, um, the leftmost card, we'll check out the middle card in a minute and Hillegrant was the rightmost card of the, uh, the cards that function as one big artwork. Uh, but Fionn Vargarnel is our defender, so 1 power and 2 armor for 9 provisions and as a defender. And on deploy you spawn and play Battle Preparation, which is a tactic that allows you to boost a soldier by 6 and give it 2 armor. Um, if it's not a soldier, it's only boosted by 4, but usually we will be putting this on a soldier. And even more usually, we're going to be putting that on Fionn himself, boosting him up to 7 with uh, 4 armor, which is a pretty beefy defender. And then of course the boy that we need to defend with Fionn is K here different. Um, five power for nine provisions and if you put him on the melee row whenever an enemy receives a boost you boost K here by the same amount. Which can be a lot especially against something like monsters uh, where monsters consumes a lot and then boosts itself by the power that it consumed. Um, K here will take all those points on himself. Of course a very vulnerable card to be reset or destroyed with tall removal but I mean, this is a meme deck and we're going to be memeing a lot with uh, this card in particular. Now Yennefer's Invocation um, is a spell where we can just place an enemy unit at the top of our deck, um, which is just incredibly powerful still. I still think this card is a bit a bit bullshit for 9 provisions, because uh, it's not only tall removal. Um, you can just pick any card and put it on your own deck and then that works incredibly well with one of our next cards. We'll be talking about it in a minute, but it's going to be Joachim. Um, but first, Yennefer of Angerberg, 2 power for 10 provisions and on deploy either you damage all other units by 2 or you boost all other units by 2 depending on where you put her. Boosting is on the range row, damaging is on the melee row and this just works very well in either direction. If you damage all other units by 2, usually most of your soldiers will be armored so you won't take any damage while your opponent will. If you boost all other units by two, you have two options. If you have K here on the board, you negate all the boosts on your opponent's side and you get them yourself. So it's basically just boosting all your units by two. Um, and even afterwards, you can even reset a row with Geralt Erden, which we'll show off in a minute. So very versatile card in this deck, even though it seems a bit meme at first. And now we have the third card of our triptych, Ramon Tirconel, four power and two armor for 10 provisions. And on deploy, you spawn and place Play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your hand and give it to armor. Most likely this is going to be the crossbowman, but of course can also be the pikeman. Um, just to give you multiple options for Ramon, so he's uh, usually not going to be bricked that way. And then Joachim, of course, if you um, 
played Joachim before, you know that he might sometimes pull cards that you don't want him to pull. Well, now with this deck, there's always an option to put a good card on top of your deck. Either you use Yennefer's Invocation and put one of the big cards from your opponent on your deck and pull him with Joachim. Or, of course, you use your leader ability in, uh, well, in any urgent case and put whatever card you want to play on top of your own deck and uh, play Joachim afterwards. So the Joachim for power for 10 provisions is disloyal, so you put him on the other side of the field. And on deploy you play the top non-disloyal unit from your own deck and boost it by 8. Basically giving you a 4 point difference, of course, because you give your opponent 4 points in return. Still a very powerful card, uh, but it's the only spying unit in this deck, which means that we don't go for the coup de grace uh, combo with Joachim. He's also a soldier that also works very well with our archetype. Then for consistency's sake, I've also included one of the newer Nilfgaardian cards, Jan Calveit, uh, 8 power for 10 provisions, and on deploy you sort the cards in your deck from the highest to the lowest provision cost, meaning that from that moment onwards, you know what your cards will be in order. Um, at the start of your game, you move yourself up by one position in the deck for each tactic in your starting deck. We have very few tactics in our deck, um, so it's not going to be that close to, um, well, do our hands, but still, it's going to be moved up one because I think the ointment is the only tactic that we have in this deck. But regardless, this is still a very good consistency card. Now we have the Mushy Truffle, a location card that is very well known up until this point, of course, uh, because it has resilience on deploy, you spawn and play a bonded unit from your starting deck and basically gives you carryover with Golden Fraud, which gives you six extra points in the next turn. So uh, a very good card to play when you're uh, in a pass round where you need to play a single card because um, you will get six points in your next turn regardless. And then of course Geralt Urn, we talked about this already, but two power for 11 provisions and on deploy we set the power of all units in a row. With the cards that we have right now, there's a few ways that we can manipulate our deck a little bit, especially with Jan Calvet, so we should be able to pull our combo pieces rather well. Which also means that you want to try and keep two bronze cards in the first round, uh, as we'll demonstrate in a minute. Then tactical advantage is just our stratagem, there's no need to go any uh, crazier. We could actually, maybe I'm going to do that just to give me another lock. Um, just go for a uh, color instead, so three, power, three damage and locking an enemy unit. And then Imperial Formation, I talked about that already. You have an order ability with three charges where you boost an allied unit by two every single time when you use those charges. And once all those charges are used up, you move a unit from your deck to the top. So either the card that you want to play with Joachim or uh, Afan Hillegrand. And the passive ability is whenever you play a soldier, give it one armor for each adjacent soldier. Basically uh, armoring up every single soldier that you play. And that's basically it for the explanation. Let's head into a few example matches where we hopefully can show off these amazing combos. And there we go. Our first match is gonna be a Nilfgaardian standoff against, um, yeah, what seems to be enslaved. So that usually means that there is tall removal in that deck, so I'm gonna have to be very careful. We actually start pretty well. Um, we don't start the game, so we definitely don't need two Nilfgaardian Knights, so we can get rid of those. We do start with two Illusionists. Illusionists only work if you have something in the graveyard from your opponent, uh, so let's get rid of one of those as well. And we get Yennefer of Engerberg. A ghouls also need to get rid of Afan Hillegrand at some point, uh, but it doesn't seem like we'll be able to get rid of... Um, yeah, we're not going to win this first round, I should say, so... Uh, no need to be troubled by that. I'm just going to start out really slowly with an Alba Pikeman um, and see where this leaves us. Probably with a lot of tactic cards in our face. Ooh, Hefty Helge on top of that as well. Interesting. Um... I mean, I'm definitely gonna pass now. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. I could boost that uh, by two points and just, just be the extreme meme that we're gonna be with this deck. So let's do this. Let's boost uh, Hefty Helge. We get a bit of armor on top of that. And then Hefty Helge is gonna get two charges. So this is gonna, ooh, they're gonna, gonna even take the uh, Alba Pikeman there. That is fine. The Alba Pikeman is even boosted because it was stolen. Um, I'm actually now going to play the standard bear because I don't think we'll get much use out of that otherwise. Um, yeah, let's just do this. There we go. So seven points on deploy, which is at least something. But yeah, we're not going to win this first round. 
And then Jan Calvates, okay. Fair enough, I suppose. So now they get all their good cards on top. But we do have our combo pieces, which I'm at least glad of. Uh, so let's just pass and see if we can uh, pull off the combo in this uh, next turn. I'm assuming not, but we'll see. We get the mushy truffle, which is something. Uh, we do need to get rid of off on Hillegrant here. And we get Jan Calvet, which is good for consistency later on. Let's just get rid of the Nautica Sergeant and see what we get. We get all of our gold cards regardless, so... Not that much of a problem. I could just play Jan Calvet and Mushy Truffle if our opponent passes. Um, ooh. Okay. And we get a Defender. I could just start out with the Alba Pikeman. Because um, I don't really need to be that aggressive right now. And we get Ardal immediately. Okay. That, that was a weird play. Um, I could just do the Abba Pikeman again. I don't really care at this point. Um, so let's just put that down again. Doesn't really matter at this point. I can actually put down like three Alba Pikemen now if I want to. A very long decision from our opponent, Menno Kuhorn, into a tactic card is going to be Experimental Remedy. Into a Nilfgaardian Knight, which is going to boost our Pikeman, and then they're going to seize it. Okay. Okay, fair enough. That was a play, so seize immediately. Could put down my own defender, but I don't think it's necessary just yet. Because uh, I feel like our opponent is going to be playing up regardless so I can do one Imperial in formation on that Alba Pacman just to get it going and that's just gonna keep hitting the armor there and we get an assassination on the Mage Illusionist but that doesn't really matter all that much and so now I can use the Mage Illusionist to get another one now uh, use one Imperial formation charge yeah and then use the Mushy Truffle I can just do this now that's gonna take twice. And then Damien to reset the leader ability. So I'm wondering, I think I can actually guess which card is gonna be up top, yeah. Um, so Ramon Tirconel is gonna be on top when I play Calvate. So I can guarantee now that I get um, Ramon Tirconel. The leader ability is recharged and we get Treason. And that's gonna take another Pikeman. Yeah, wow. That just took my entire, um, damn, my entire strategy away from me. Um, I can now play Joachim um, into Ramon Tirconel, which I knew was going to be the top card, and then play the Artvein Crossbow, and then right in the middle and take out, yeah, Men and Kuhorn. Like that. There we go. And then K here. That is <laughs> Oh, this is funny. This is gonna be hilarious. Uh, so we get Key here against us. Uh, fine, I guess. Oh, this is gonna be hilarious. Are we gonna get Key here on Key here action? So that's Villager Forts, okay. Destroying our Ramon Tier Connell. And we get, <laughs> we get our fun on top. Okay, this, this has completely borked everything. Um, I could still do the Defender, but at this point, it's probably better just to use Yennefer as an attacker. I'm just gonna put K here down. And then whatever card do I want to actually put on top? I don't really have a preference at the moment. I think the best cards are gonna be on top regardless. Yeah, K here is probably gonna be the better option here. Oh, this is hilarious. I don't even need to use my leader ability. If I get Yennefer's Invocated, that's going to be even funnier. Assassination. Assassination it is. Okay. Um, well, since I'm here to just show off the combo regardless. Um, <laughs> Yennefer of Vangerberg. A bada boom. So now we get two chunky um, key here, which is really funny. Yeah, so now I can just use um, Geralt Erden. Wait, do I need to use that final charge? So I think I'm gonna get... I think I'm gonna get enough points just from the reset. 
Um, just counting here. So this is 8, this is 2, so that's 10, 12, uh, 23, and 25. I uh, need... 25 is just enough, but I need an extra charge. Um, yeah, I need that extra charge, because otherwise I'm gonna lose... I'm gonna put the armored cavalry up top. I'm gonna lose to the two hits from the pikemen. So if I now reset that row, we have four points ahead, and even if the pikemen hit both um, unarmored enemies, then that's fine. Okay. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> that could have gone way worse than it did. Um, so I think I get the end of his invocation. The yeah, this is perfect, right? The cavalry, and then the end of his invocation, and then Vandemar. This is fine. This can still work out. Okay, so finish redrawing. I don't need to do anything fancy. Um, let's start out with Fion. This is such a weird match. <laughs> Uh, matches against Nilgard are crazy sometimes. We get bribery. And we get K here again. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I can just lock that. Um, and then kill it with Vanamore. And then see what the final card is going to be. Which I can Yennefer invocate. But I'm, I don't think I'm going to win this. So that is lock and a hit for three points. This is gonna be weird. I'm gonna play Vanamar first, just because it's the one thing that I really can brick right now. So we're seven points ahead with one card difference. My final card is gonna be eight points for now. And we know what the last two cards are. It's four damage and then a lock. So I think I got this. Because um, the last one is going to be Ox, and Ox is just six points and a lock. So that's going to be it, I think. <laughs> this is the weirdest match ever. Yeah, there we go. That's uh, one point ahead. <laughs> oh, this is such a weird deck. Holy hell, we won that. So next matchup again. <laughs> oh, what the hell. Again, against Nilfgaard. So... I mean, even the previous video were, were like three Nilfgaard matches of five, by the way, because I recorded five of those. Um, it's actually a pretty good starting hands. We don't start again, but I think I can actually handle a few more bronze cards here. Because um, right now I can actually get rid of the lock here. Um, Double Illusionist might be fun, but I need to kill something, so yeah, that's going to be fine. Okay. We got Oneromancy as the start. So this is this is lockdown. So disable opponent's or leader ability for the duration of this um, round. If your le opponent's leader has no charges left or is on cooldown, spawn two operatives on your melee row instead. This is a mill deck. So this deck is gonna try and take all my cards. I'm gonna try to be as aggressive as possible then. Um, by starting with a four power bronze. <laughs> I have no idea what I was saying this now. Which card did I even lose? I totally missed which card I lost there. Oh, I didn't lose any because they didn't uh, use the... Um, yeah, they didn't deploy that card. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm gonna go full out with... Artfane Crossbowman here. The more the merrier, right? So, first up, that goes over there, gets three armor, and we start engining up a little bit. It's gonna get locked, that is fine, I don't care. We can now also kill the Assimilate engine, so not a problem whatsoever. And that one now gets four armor. Opponent is deciding, we get Bratens immediately. Interesting, and of course going on to the, um, the Kingslayers here. Luckily getting rid of some low provision bronze, uh, so Alba Pikemen in between there, so getting a lot more armor and of course another damage engine. And we get another Duchess Informant, another Kingslayer of course, so just lazy, lazy mill. Um, yeah, Mushy Truffle is gonna be next and I'm gonna be playing an Alba Pikeman on top of that, so now we can hit wherever we want. So that's two damage ticks per turn. So we basically have the round here if we want to. 
I think I might actually use our full combo here. So that's another reveal. Ooh, that's from Monte Canal, but I didn't really have any more use for him anyway, so that's not that much of a problem. And Sunset Wonder is, sadly goes to the back row. Otherwise, I could have uh, reset that entire thing. Can I actually put the Nilfgaardian Knight down on the front row as well, filling that row completely? I don't think I need to do anything else here. Um, so I can just put that over here. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, there we go. Another Kingslayer, of course, milling our entire deck. But that was the four provision ointment, so that is also absolutely fine. Um, now, I'm going to use Yennefer of Fangerberg on the range row. I think we have about the same amount of units on the board. Uh, they have nine, we have uh, eight, so our row isn't actually full here. Um, that's not a problem, they're going to get more points than we do. Uh, but absolutely meant to be. So, Yennefer of Vangerberg on the range throw. Boosting all of those cards. And there we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. And then we can use the standard bear to get some more points out of that. Because that is gonna be... Ooh, that's just bleeding on one of our units. Okay. So now we can just put standard... Oh, I was actually at... Nine cards there, I kind of miscounted. So standard bear is going to be boosted up by, I think that is eight points. So that's 12 points on deploy. And that boosts us straight over our opponent. And we get the Imperial Brigade there. I don't want to use Erden just now. Um, but I'm going to use Calvate, which means that they might be able to pull our top cards, but this is, I think, the safest bet at this point. Because um, we're going to be able to push this uh, next round. And if I can keep our leader ability until the final round, if there comes one. But I think we have this round here. Wait, they're going to disable my leader ability now? Why would you do that? That seems weird. Yeah, because I have this. I only need to pass. There's two damage ticks going around and there's only one armored enemy. So I have this round in the, in the back. That is really weird. <laughs> that was a weird decision because now I still have my leader ability. Because um, it comes back in the next round. It's only disabled for one round. And I still have Erden. And all my best cards. There we go. Yeah, that was a really, really stupid play. Um, but I did force their hand a little bit. Um, there wasn't really a good option for them anymore, because I was going to push that second round. Um, I don't know why everything says zero here. That's weird. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. <laughs> GG. Okay, after some very weird Nilfgaardian matches, we get hand boosting. Ooh. Ooh. That is really good. That means I just need Erden for the final <laughs> round, and I already have Erden. Oh, this is awesome. I also start for once, which is good. Uh, maybe two Nilf Guardian Knights is going to be a bit too much, and I don't need Path on Hillegrand. Um, I don't really have damage dealers at the moment, so Illusionist might not be as good as it seems right now. Um, I can get Yennefer's Invocation here, and maybe get rid of Fion. Although I do really want to grab first round here. Um, so maybe Yennefer's Invocation is going to really help with that. And Yennefer of Engerberg. There we go. So, starting play, if you have blue coin, is always a Nilt Guardian Knight. It's just straight up 8 points. So ideally, my final 3 cards should be Yennefer of Engerberg. Well, get here first. Yennefer of Engerberg then, and then Geralt Erden. So I do want to keep the Defender as well. Um... And I can just put down some pikemen, I think. Or maybe the Nolska Sergeant to start. It's also a deploy card, so it doesn't really matter at this point. It's a, a passive engine, so you can definitely push that way. And then we get the Sorceress of Dol Blatana. We don't really have... We can lock that. Um, but of course, it can be purified away if they have something for that. There's no dead units in their graveyard just yet, so I can't really do... Um, the Illusionist. So I think Pikeman is definitely just the only option I really have here. 
Um, and I can lock, yeah, I should just lock that sorceress. It's just uh, the easiest thing to do, I'm assuming. It could, of course, be purified, but then it also needs to be boosted again. Um, we get a hand boost action. So that means there's going to be four units that are going to be hand boosted now. And then we get the Hawker support is more boosts in hand. That is fine. Uh, I think I'm just going to grab the Mushy Truffle now, just because I get that bonded action with the Pikemen. Um, and they're all going to be armored up, so that is also really good. I don't get any extra points on the... I don't know where the armor is. There it is. On the uh, Nozga Sergeant. Um, but it is what it is. It is two damage every turn, so nothing to scoff at. And then we get another Hawker support. So that uh, is basically six points in their hands every turn, because uh, Hawker support has been changed that if you boost an allied unit in hands that is already boosted, then it is boosted by three instead of one, which is, of course, really, really powerful. Uh, I think I'm probably going to pass next turn. I'm going to really focus on getting this first round, so I can just put everything into my final play uh, at the very end. Um... So Yennefer's Invocation is not useful just now. I could try and get something useful up top. And with that, I'm thinking even Jan Kal fades. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I don't have a use for the standard bear just yet, although he does have a deployability, of course. So I think I'm just gonna do um, boost, boost, boost. Put Jan Kalveit up top and then use Joachim de Wet to uh, pull him, which is going to be a massive 16 point guard, by the way. Um, and leave it at that for now. Which I think gave us enough of a head start. I did burn my, le my uh, leader ability here, but I definitely want to grab round one. Um, just so I have final say. Against hand boosting, it's just easiest to have final say. Um, and I even have Yennefer's Invocation still in hand, so that's also really good. And now we're guaranteed to also get uh, K here in hand, so I think we basically won already. So of course, Afan Hillegrand is not useful for us, and Vanamar isn't either because we don't have a lock anymore. So that can go, and we get another Alba Pikeman, which can now, of course, be uh, doubled up with Ramon Tier Cornell. So basically our hand is perfect. And I don't need to do anything else, so I'm just going to leave um, the hand boosting to our opponents and let them just continue. Because I basically have coin advantage now. Um, there's not much else our opponent is going to be able to do against us. Because um, the final two plays of hand boosting are usually just a couple of very highly boosted cards. Um, and if I play my own cards pretty correctly, then there shouldn't be any problem. So of course we lose the Mushy Truffle now, um, but that was just basically a tool for me to um, push round one really, really hard. Because this uh, should all work out in our favor. We also get... Hmm, we also do get a lock now. Um, we do have a couple of soldiers, but I think the pikemen are better than the Artfane crossbowmen right now. Um, I could just recycle these two to see if we can get more out of that, because the locks are better to get rid of the uh, the hand boosting just in total. So Artfane Crossbowman gone, and then... Okay. Off on Hillegrand gone. Get another Guardian Knight. We don't start. And we get another lock. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That is absolutely fine. So Call of the Forest. Probably gonna go for Dunka first. Oh no. Okay. Saskia Commander. And that is getting... Okay. Not what I expected to happen, but fair enough. Uh, we can use Ramon Tirconel now first. That's absolutely fine. I'm gonna boost the the pikeman with one extra point. Um, and other than that, we can start locking, I think. So, uh, Ramon Tirconel onto the uh, pikeman that we have in hand. And that gets extra armor, so it can't be destroyed by uh, something like Nature's Rebuke right now. The only possible destruction option would be um, a juicy Sheldon Skaggs, and that would be really good, because then Sheldon Skaggs is out of the picture already. Then we got Nature's Rebuked, but again, that's not enough, as I just mentioned, so we get another Pikeman over there. Uh, also two armor, so again, can also not be destroyed by Nature's Rebuke. We're probably going to get Forest Protector now into a second, or maybe Circle of Life is also enough. Circle of Life can get rid of that Alba Pikeman there. 
And there we go. I do not have prophetic powers. I guarantee you. But now they could choose the hand boosting there. And they're going to get another card, which is going to be the Cat Witcher. That is the first option that we are going to be locking. So there we go. Um, so I think this is pretty clear where this is going. Um, we're going to be keeping Yennefer's Invocation for something juicy to grab. Um, if you need to lock something else, we can also do that. But I think we're just going to grab the biggest card that they come up with. Um, with Yennefer's Invocation at the very end. Um, well, almost the very end. I think one for Yennefer's Invocation and then Geralt Urden at the very end. And then we get hit with the double blood on the archer. Just one point, yeah, to take down the armor there, which was going to be the most obvious um, solution there. I think I could go with the defender now. Um, if I put that in between soldiers, he will boost himself. Well, the armor is going to go to four, which is not going to be enough to grab uh, protect against the nature's rebuke. Uh, so Fion goes over here, and then we get the, um, what's that thing called again? Battle preparation on uh, Fion himself. So there we have Dunka. Dunka, we can't lock Dunka because she has a fail. I could now grab K here, but it is really risky at this point. We still have the Defender. Did I get an indication that this is a Devotion deck? I'm assuming it's a Devotion deck, because otherwise you're not guaranteed to have Torque in hand. Uh, so I'm going to risk it and put uh, K here over here. K here over here. And I do hope my opponent let me play out the uh, the combo here. You get another Bountiful Harvest. Maybe they get lucky and get a Sorceress. I, But then I can lock it, so that's not a problem. And I'm guessing there's still not a human on the board. So the card that we're going to be seeing on the melee row now is going to be the Smuggler, the second Smuggler that we haven't seen yet. There we go, there it is. Um, so we can definitely lock that. There we go. Uh, next up is going to be Yennefer of Vangerberg. Which is going to be boosting everything again. Um, and then we get the standard bear to get a lot of points out of those boosts. Yennefer's Invocation and then Erden. And Erden is going to get just rid of everything. Because they already have the problem that Kei here now takes every boost that they are going to get. So I, I also hard countered Aglaïs with this. Because Aglaïs will boost herself, but that will not matter at all. Okay, so now we get damage on Fion. So they're really trying to get rid of the defender here. Uh, but I'm gonna make K here so big right now that it doesn't matter. Unless Sheldon is really big, but um, I don't think that will be the case. So let's just use Yennefer of Engerberg now. It's gonna boost everything and of course K here up to 25. That's already a chunky, a chunky K here. A chunky boy. I, I don't think that deck is gonna have Erden, but if they have, then we are boned as well. But if not, yeah, it's just going to be really fun to see this happen. The Pikeman is still going as well, so taking a, down a little bit of points. But if we damage units now, that just takes away from the Urden value. And I'm really curious how our opponent's going to react. Because this is, this is such a mean deck that it's really weird that we've won everything so far. Because there we go, they shall. It's going to take down the Defender. Um, so now we have a lot of boosted units on the board. So um, I don't think they have... I'm assuming the last two cards are going to be Aglaïs and um, Torque. So there's not going to be Erden. So I can just use the standard bear now, which is going to boost himself to 12 again. Say again that this card isn't good. And then Torque is going to be first usually, because if the last one is Aglaïs. So yeah, if you see Torque now, then Aglaïs is going to be the last. I mean, taking 17 points out of the equation is probably good enough, I think. Um, even though... The 13 points on that reset row is really big right now. I, I doubt even if they put Aglaïs on that same row that that's going to make a difference. So Yennefer's Invocation, I'm going to put it on Sheldon Skax because we have so many points in the back row that we reset. And that front row has a few damaged units. Please put it on the back row. I would love for you to put that on the back row. So we get hit over there with the three points from Dunka. And the last one is a Dwarven Mercenary. 
That is hilarious. So now we can just reset that back row and that should be just enough, yeah. <laughs> oh, this has been an amazing video. I love these batches. So I think that was uh, more than enough to this to showcase how powerful this deck could be. But remember, if there's just one tall removal card in any of those matchups, then uh, the chunky K here would have been destroyed easily. But uh, that was actually pretty nice. Um, so basically you have a few options. I think I'd, I've explained them enough by now. Uh, but mainly the big combo is of course K here into Yennefer of Engerberg and then resetting everything on your opponents with Geralt Erden. Um, you also of course have the standard soldier combos with the pikemen and of course the crossbowmen with Romantir Cornell and the Mushy Truffle. Um, so that just gives you a consistent stream of damage. And on top of that, of course, you also have the Yennefer Invocation with Joachim uh, combo. And even if you don't have Yennefer Invocation, you can guarantee which card you're going to pull, as I displayed in that first round, I think, uh, using Imperial uh, Formation just to push really hard if you want to. So, uh, And then, of course, Call of Eight, very good consistency card because you know what your card order is going to be. Um, so that's basically it for the meme army. So again, the base idea was uh, the, uh, the the base idea came from Bricky, one of my uh, team Elder Blood teammates. So partial props definitely go to him. Uh, I'll see if I can put some of his uh, social links in the description down below as well, because he's a pretty fun player as well. So uh, that was it for the meme army. Uh, next deck guide is also going to be about a very meme -y deck. We're going to be going back to Northern Realms. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be just as fun, I hope, as this deck was, because uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. And nobody plays this, so nobody expects what's gonna happen, um, which is just part of the fun. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. Don't forget to upvote the deck list on Play Gwent. Uh, like this video, of course, because every support, uh, every bit of support is really appreciated. And if you have any more tips to improve upon this deck, also let me know, because of course, that's what we're here for, after all, to help each other out. So you can do that in the comment section down below. So Thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty, of course. See ya.